With free agency beginning last Wednesday, we've had a flurry of activity over the last few days as teams look to quickly secure the top talent on the market. Hello and welcome back into Penn State Sports Night. I'm Chris Lemo, joined alongside Evan Lasick and Ben Russell. While some of the signings were clear-cut deals for front offices, others left us scratching our heads. Evan, what do you think was the most surprising signing so far? All right, so Chris and Ben, I'm going to go with Andy Dalton here, going from the Cowboys to the Bears. I thought that was really surprising because the Bears all week, for the last two or three weeks, they're talking about Russell Wilson. They're talking about Deshaun Watson, what they can get for him. Yes, it may have been a pipe dream, but to be going from that to have Mitch Trubisky, you have Nick Foles, how sad is it for Bears fans everywhere to just have to settle for yet another Nick Foles-esque player, another fringe starter possibly backup quarterback who's going to lead your team this year? That's going to be really upsetting. You don't know what they're going to do in the draft, but still, right now they have a bridge, they've had a bridge quarterback essentially for the last five or six years. I'd be pretty upset if I were them because that's just who's going to have to lead them. Their offense is mediocre. Yes, they have Allen Robinson on the franchise tag. He doesn't want to play there still, especially after you're supposed, your quarterback's supposed to make receivers want to play there. That doesn't make him want to play there, in my opinion. So I thought it was really questionable at what they did and who they got. And yes, they may have put all their eggs in one basket when the Seahawks said, no, we're not trading him. They got upset and just had to resort to signing him. But there were still things you could have done, money that could have went somewhere else. I would have just been fine with Nick Foles if I were them. Well, we've seen Andy Dalton go to the playoffs in the past with the Bengals. He had some solid games last year with the Cowboys, but he's not the player he once was. The Bears probably should have gone big or go home for in terms of their quarterback, but we'll see how Andy Dalton does in Chicago. My biggest surprise was actually Juju Smith-Schuster returning to the Pittsburgh Steelers. So I had a couple of offers from teams like the Eagles, the Chiefs, uh, the Ravens in their division. The team that I thought he was going to end up with was the New York Jets. He has a lot of familiarity with quarterback Sam Darnold. Now, obviously, we don't know what's going to happen with Sam Darnold in terms of his future in New York. But I thought that Juju's familiarity with Darnold would have led him to go to New York. He would have had a chance to be a number one wide receiver there. Instead, he opted for a one-year sort of prove-it deal with the Steelers for $8 million. This will likely be Ben Roethlisberger's last year in Pittsburgh. And like I said, Juju hasn't really proven himself as a number one receiver yet. So it'll be interesting to see how he does under a new offensive coordinator in Pittsburgh. Ben Roethlisberger, like I said, this could be his last ride in Pittsburgh. It'll be interesting to see how Juju does on a one-year deal to try and get more money next offseason. Yeah, you're talking about teams that offered him, like the Eagles offered him. I understand not wanting to go there. The Ravens, their passing attack kind of struggled, so I understand that division rival. He really loves Pittsburgh. The Chiefs were an intriguing one, but I think he wants to be the number one. He wants to be the star receiver there, and there he, I think he would have been the third or fourth starter that gets the ball. Yeah, I definitely have to agree. I thought Juju was going to end up somewhere else, but I'm sure AFC North Divisional opponents will be fired up to face his TikTok logo dancing antics once again this year. Looking back at the activity over the last few days, it's clear that some of the teams had a lot of financial flexibility to make some big adjustments to their roster, while others had to maneuver a difficult cap crunch. So Ben, which team do you think has won the free agency period so far? Well, I'm going to go with a team that not a lot of people are really talking about in free agency, and that is the Denver Broncos. Now, we've seen over the past few years, ever since Peyton Manning retired after 2016 when they won Super Bowl 50, they have not had consistent quarterback play. They've gone through a string of quarterbacks. They've gone through a string of head coaches. They haven't been that same team that won five straight division titles, won a Super Bowl. Drew Locke might not be the answer at quarterback in Denver. We've seen them in the Deshaun Watson sweepstakes. Maybe go after another quarterback in the draft. But their defense after free agency is looking scary. I really like the Ronald Darby signing from Washington. He was a former first round pick out of Florida State, played in Buffalo, won a Super Bowl with the Eagles, kind of struggled his first couple years. He had a breakout year last year in Washington, and he turned that into a big payday with Denver. And I like him playing alongside Kyle Fuller, who the Broncos just signed. Now, Fuller has had all pro years under Vic Fangio, who was his defensive coordinator in Chicago. He's 28 years old, he'll be 29 this year. I think this was a great under-the-radar signing by the Broncos. And something else that what I liked the Broncos did in free agency was re-signing two key players on their defense in Shelby Harris and Justin Simmons, who finally got the respect that he deserves becoming the highest-paid safety in the league. The dude is an absolute baller. He has been so consistent since he came into the league out of Boston College in 2016. And another under-the-radar thing about the Broncos, they'll be getting Von Miller back this year. He missed the entire season last year. And, and him and Bradley Chubb, 
when they're healthy, they are arguably the most dangerous pass rush duo in the NFL. So it'll be interesting to see how Von Miller coming back, playing alongside Chubb, how that'll work out. But I like the Broncos to potentially be a team to watch out for in the AFC if they can get consistent quarterback play from Drew Locke or someone else. I completely agree. Their offense didn't change that much. Drew Locke is definitely still the question mark for that team. Their defense is looking scary. And speaking of scary defenses, you got to talk about the New England Patriots. I think they really succeeded this, um, this NFL free agency, signing guys like Matthew Judon, getting Jalen Mills out there, who was a questionable corner, but a decent hybrid safety in Philadelphia at least. But under Bill Belichick, anybody can be outstanding. So John U. Smith, Hunter Henry, I was a little surprised by the two tight end signings. They're, they have always kind of done that. They had Rob Gronkowski and they had always a secondary tight end to compliment him. So I think that's gonna be really good for Cam Newton. He liked throwing to Greg Olson down in Carolina. I think he's getting more comfortable adding receivers in there like Kendrick, Kendrick Bourne and Nelson Aguilar too. Again, like third string receivers, but Bill Belichick's system really lets players thrive. That's gonna be a little, that's gonna be fantastic for them just re-signing Cam Newton, maybe seeing his potential again, giving him weapons, giving him an offense, helping out on defense. You also have to remember the Patriots had a lot of guys, they had double digit players sit out due to COVID incidents, so they didn't wanna play this season. They're getting them all back next year. New England went seven and nine with, I believe, 50, at least 15 players opting out of the season, questionable offensive play, and they still went seven and nine. I think that's outstanding for them. All these acquisitions are just gonna be helpful. Kyle Van Noy helping at linebacker. They're getting Dante Hightower back. It's going to be a new season for New England. They really want to compete with Buffalo again for that division title. Well, if we've learned one thing over the past two decades, it's that you should never bet against Bill Belichick. The guy is probably the best coach in NFL history. And like you said, adding these players to a team that was very depleted last year because of COVID issues and injuries, it'll be interesting to see how Cam Newton does in his second year under Josh McDaniels in that Patriots system. Struggled last year in the passing attack, maybe not what he once was, but if he can get back to that sort of level where he was the MVP a few years ago, if they can get consistent quarterback play, the Patriots are a team to watch out for next year for sure. Yeah, Evan, I have to agree. I'm not too surprised that New England looks to be the winner of this offseason. Between the cap space that they had and Robert Kraft's big splash and spend abilities in the front office, it seemed like this was bound to happen, that they would get some premium talent. Speaking of premium talent, a lot of it's off the board, but there's still some big names left out there that are capable of filling roster holes on many teams. Evan, which players do you think front offices should turn their attention to as free agency continues? Well, Chris, the Giants kind of messed this up a little for me. I was talking about, I want to talk about Adoree Jackson. They just signed him to a three-year deal. That's going to be really exciting for them, adding another cornerback. I think the Giants are starting to look really scary here. But Jadavion Clowney, another player the Titans did not re-sign this past season. Adoree Jackson, they surprised me by cutting him last week. But Jadavion Clowney, I understand not giving him money. A lot of people kind of forgot about him. I, I completely forgot he was on the Titans roster for a minute. But he's still an edge rusher. He was the first overall pick for a reason. If you can get him in the right system, his pass, rush, or his pass rushing has been pretty, pretty bad for a player who was terrorizing quarterbacks in college. He had J.J. Watt his entire career, pretty much, really helped him get his numbers up. When he was the main guy on the D-line, his sacks went down. He had no sacks this past season. But I think he still can get a little bit of money. He can still help you out on the edge rush. He's an outside linebacker. His pass coverage, not that good, but he's mainly an edge rusher, as I said. So him as run stopping and run stuffing, I think it'll really help any team looking for a kind of veteran edge rusher. That's a great point. And Davion Clowney is a guy who, like you said, was the number one overall pick in 2014. He showed some brilliant flashes over his years in the NFL. And as for Dory Jackson, young, speedy cornerback playing in that Giants defense now, also a kick and punt returner. So it'll be interesting to see how he does in New York. Like you said, a three-year deal, $39 million. So they're really banking on this guy becoming one of the key players, not only on their defense, but on their team overall and in special teams as well. Now, some of the guys that I'm looking at are also veteran players, Richard Sherman and T.Y. Hilton, both guys who probably aren't what they once were, but still have a lot of talent and can still add veteran presence to a playoff contender or any team. Now, Richard Sherman was an all-pro and a pro bowler in 2019 when the 49ers won 13 games and made it to the Super Bowl before losing to the Chiefs. I think that this guy still has gas left in the tank, and I think a perfect spot for him would be the New York Jets. Playing under his former defensive coordinator in Robert Sala, he would have a lot of familiarity in that 
defensive system, plus the guy's personality is made for New York. Now, as for T.Y. Hilton, he's also probably not what he once was. We saw when he was with Andrew Luck when they played together on the Colts. This guy is one of the best deep ball threats in the NFL. He's just been so consistent over the years catching deep touchdown passes from Luck. Obviously, the past few years since Luck retired with Jacoby Brissett and Phillip Rivers, not really guys who throw the ball downfield. So that's why I'm looking at the Los Angeles Chargers with Justin Herbert at quarterback. We saw last year he was one of the best deep ball throwers in the NFL as a rookie, and he's only going to get better with age and maturity. And adding a guy like T.Y. Hilton to play alongside Keenan Allen and Mike Williams in that system could be a very intriguing fit. I would be very intrigued to see T.Y. Hilton end up in Los Angeles. Well, I have to agree, Evan. The Adoree Jackson signing for the New York Giants will definitely help them out this year. Maybe there's some hope for the dumpster fire of a division that is the NFC East. Well, I'm excited to see whether teams will keep up this active free agent signing period or whether teams will now turn towards the NFL draft to fill out their roster before training camp. That will do it for this edition of Penn State Sports Night. For Evan Lasik and Ben Russell, I'm Chris Lemo, and have a good night. Thank you for watching this edition of Penn State Sports Night. If you're a fan of our content, please be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more clips. Also, follow us on Twitter at PSSN TV and on Instagram at PSU Sports Night to keep up with all the action. For all my colleagues, we are Penn State Sports Night.